Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makoto Man at YouTube with another model video. We will be building, 3D printing and painting the Jishong from Gundam 00. The 3D, the 3D STL file has been provided by my good friend from K Scale Models and is currently available for free to download. It's worth checking out the website. We will work on two scales across two 3D printing platforms. Starting off back in 2020 and utilizing Mesh Mixer, we've hollowed out the 1 to 144 variant to save on resin. This is one of the final prints that were produced on the old Spark Maker before it has uh, demised and no longer operating. The bed is tiny though large enough to accompany all the parts supported on a single plate. The Spark Maker has Spark Studio software that outputs a WoW sliced file format that feeds straight into the machine via an SD card. As things is not working as it used to, the settings are generous with quite a bit of support using the last of my undesirable resin as a test and fun scalp comparison model. As you can see here, the printer is looking very sad, held together with glue and tape. I vaguely remember I had remnants of three different type of resins and mixed it together to the weird neon yellow. Parts did fail on the first print and the leftovers were produced on a second bed of resin. Everything came out okay-ish, though it did pancake in some areas and overexposure has caused some panels and detail to be a bit shallow or flooded out. We resumed to washing it in alcohol, water and trimming the support nubs and started to assemble with super glue. I was not too keen on my printing but it's very cool to see it in the small scale sanding it down and doing the final assembly. Where parts didn't work I hollowed it out and added putty for easier assembly on my end. Regardless of my failings using inferior products and a printer, which was an amazing learning tool when the medium was very expensive and couldn't quite enter at the higher end, I have to say that K-Scale models do use proper and professional mechanical engineering standards when CAD drafting drafting everything up from Fusion 360 to a very solid mesh file that is extremely easy to print. I have handled some of their printed products which is very clean and neat and ideal as aftermarket or whole kit projects for scale modeling consumption. The project was super glued together with a filler primer applied. You can see where the pancaking has occurred. As much sanding was done painted in lacquers to get a desert color and a bit of a sludge wash to pull out some detail with weathering pencils. Again, a bit on the sad, droopy and sloppy side, though next to a mobile suit, it's so insignificant that it's just a filler piece for a robot to stomp or destroy. Where the real gem of this project comes out is with the 135th variant. Their prototype 1144 was done better on the K-Scale model blog. Almost 12 months later, with the Creality Ender 5 Plus, the ability to print very large parts, I moved on doing bulk of parts as well as the larger pieces in various leftover plastic I had. This was also during the stage that I was calibrating and testing this printer. So some of the prints again were a failing on my part. Nothing that putty and sanding can't resolve. Utilizing automotive filler primer and automotive grade sandpaper starting at 80 grit, I worked with gluing, brushing on putty sanding, allowing to dry and repeating multiple times on each part moving to airbrushing until I got such a smooth finish it was almost reminiscent of an injection molded kit or even a resin garage project. Another 12 months to the modern day I have eventually figured out the slicing and leveling settings to get very ideal prints. 
If you also wish to learn more about my very quick method of filling the Z axis artifacts and faults with automotive products, please check out my super cheap auto primer filler video where I show the four methods of application, mixing and applying for the quickest turnaround of a 3D print model to a very smooth finish. At conclusion of filling, sanding and polishing up to 2000 grit, I treated this as a garage kit and pinned areas that didn't quite fit or I broken the connections and any connections that fit very well were super glued into place to paint in one piece. There's no serious color separation except for the wheels, though the outer wheels for extra space was scaled up by half to one percent. The fitting of the mesh model is fairly ideal. Where some problems occurred was mostly due to the sloppy printing or me slicing off parts and just preferring to fill with putty and use metal rods for a superior fit. Any weird traditional modelling gaps was filled with epoxy putty and filler putty and sanded to a finished part in several parts to be painted and then final assembly. It was interesting with the wheels utilising toilet paper rolls and pinning it to an alligator clip for ease of painting. I do enjoy little engineering challenges like that. Once sub-assembled, then we put the final mix of automotive filler primer and lacquer thinner to touch up. There was a couple of final faults, but they were just filled in and only sanded and touched up at those points. With my interest in the most obscure corners of the Gundam fandom and Mecha franchise, I was definitely drawn to this tank regardless of who made it and felt that I just had to paint and build it. Cool sci-fi tank. Almost gave me memories of the Westwood Studios mammoth tank. All the painting was done in lacquers and I did very heavy modulation shading starting with the wheels. Lacquer black building up to a tire black and a touch up of German grey and going absolute nuts with the desert colour. A simple sand yellow across the whole thing would be a bit dull like my 1144 counterpart and started with a very dark brown on certain panels and shading up by four tones with pre-shading of black lines across the very deep panels. I appreciated the depths of these panels as they were easy to clean, easy to print and the flowing of paint and washes through it was just a joy to paint and model. It was almost uh, like my mind was read in preferences of painting and producing armoured and mecha kits. Gluing the majority together with the side armour and wheels separate was the easiest way for painting sub-assembly then final assembly. I was able to paint the bottom very dark and hold on to that as I turned around and did all of my various shading and weathering. With the final shading of the lightest tan colours on the top and liquid smoke clear black at the bottom end of the armour, we had a spectacularly shaded component that can be stuck together. Pulling out the Tamir and other brands of panel line accent colours, I've floated in all the various panels and cleaned up with no hassle whatsoever especially the wheels and each of the parts were glued together very snug and appropriately with PVA glue and set aside for 24 hours to dry. With a, a little touching up of hand painting and a wealth of military sci-fi and Gundam 00 decals, I did a very nice transition of markings of late Soviet modern Russian imagery blending into the start of the lore of Gundam 00. Absolutely a lot of fun. The touching up of a bit of the edges and a final top coat of Mr. Hobby clear matte rough and clear matte smooth. 
In between the stages, of course, hitting it up with the weathering pencil and some pigments to get that heavy black line art anime edging and adding a little bit extra matte base into the clear matte for that very dead, no gloss, no sheen whatsoever paper finish. Via pulling the airbrush as far back as possible and lightly dusting on with little to no wet build up to really distort and frost things up. This was a long term project with each process done as small jobs over the period of months. A little bit of history and context behind the genius of K-scale models, a very modern solution to garage kits and the future torchbearer of the hobby, is a gentleman who held a YouTube t handle of Shoot Me, uh, spelt out quite long. Uh, this gentleman is pretty much the early YouTube version of Justin Y appearing across all the different Gundam modeling YouTube channels who are doing very interesting custom painting and review work, giving very encouraging comments and subscribing to everyone for almost more than 10 years and a nice support bed of the growth and where the Gundam reviewing and modeling community stands today. A real pioneer of the hobby who has a more known presence and a true cornerstone to the 3D printed Gunpla community, especially a support bed to the Facebook group. If you love his work and feel inclined, definitely please check out his social medias, his website, and definitely his Patreon. If you're a 3D printer yourself, you will score some lovely and very exclusive 3D files to print for yourself or even buy a lot of these printed models and even military subjects, World War II subjects. For a biased review of the kit, uh, very good friends with the guy. I've got absolutely no complaints. Very cool subject. Absolutely enjoyed it. The detail is on spot. The proportions and layouts does compare and feel right to the line art. I think the reference and researching plus the embellishment and extra work put into this does bring true justice to the subject matter and the spirit of the Gundam 00 universe. Very worthwhile printing, a very fun project, a very unique piece to your collection or something to build, paint and finish as well as display online if you choose to put resources into one. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time stay tuned for further content and we'll catch you guys next time. I will be producing more models from K-Scale Models.